Hello, welcome to Stacio Designs. Um, today, I am making some can coolers for a nonprofit organization. So I thought I'd record it and show you guys how to sublimate on can coolers or can koozies, whatever you want to call them. Um, these are neoprene, white. Um, just got them off Amazon. I needed them super quick. So I bought them off Amazon. Um, I love working on neoprene. They take color really well. Normally, uh, with my own personal designs, I usually wrap them. But today, she actually just wants a white background with her logo and some text on the back. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm doing four at a time. I've actually already done eight, made sure they worked. And now I'm going to show you the last four here. So as with anything, but especially neoprene, Lint roll, lint roll, lint roll. Um, there are little dust and spots on here that you don't even see. But once they're pressed, if you don't lint roll, if you press over these little lint spots, they will turn blue. Um, and of course, you don't want little blue spots in your design. So I'm just lint rolling. And a lot of times I like to use um, heat tape, but I had to do so many of these that I'm going back to the good old spray. Um, so what I have been using, only because I happen to have it in the house and it was easy to find, it is Elmer's Craft Bond. It is temporary or permanent bond. So I guess if I left it there for too long, it would be permanent. But right now, um, for my use, it's working out perfectly as repositional. So the trick with you, because if the nozzle is clogged or covered at all, you'll get little glue spots in your design. And then that will translate into your sublimation print. So you want to make sure you keep the nozzle super, super clean so you get a perfectly fine mist and no clumpy glue spots. So shake it real good. So I've already printed my four up, um, how I've been doing it. I am not tearing them because the paper is going to go past the edges. Um, so that makes life much easier. So there you go, I have all my images cut and ready to put on. So I'm gonna do, I'll show you one and then I'll probably fast forward this video a little bit because you don't need to see every single one. Have my image. And then I just give the tiniest spray. You really don't need, you really don't need that much glue to keep it on. So I'm just gonna give it a little spray. And normally I have this door open and the fan on when I'm using spray inside the house, but because of the video, I didn't want the background noise. So I'm just going to suffer through it. Um, but it also helps me to do this by a window so that I can, I don't know if you can see the, you can't see the window in the video, but there's a window right here in the video and I hold this up and then I place this perfectly because as you know, in my past videos, I have mentioned, I am the queen of cockeyed. So... I kind of look through to see if it's even, if it's the same distance on both sides. And because it's repositional, I can move it around a little bit once it's on there and I'm happy. 
just stick that on nice and good. And then I actually do the other side also, and I'm gonna press it with both sides on it. And this one's a little more, e little easier because um, it's centered, so I can kind of gauge where it goes. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna put it on my press. I'm gonna do one side, and then without removing the paper, I'm gonna flip it and do the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all four of these done. Okay, so now I have all of my um, can koozies covered. I don't like to create my, um, put my paper onto my substrate on the heat press. Um, again, like I said, queen of cockeyed, so I actually do it on the floor on a board so that I can assess it better. And um, I, I, have a, I have a swing away, which is amazing, but I don't have quite enough room, so I burn myself on this all the time. So I only use this when I'm ready to, when I'm ready to actually press. Um, so here you go. This is front and back. You spray it on. And I'm just going to place them on here. Um, so while I'm doing this, I'll just tell you, I use an Epson 7720 of, yeah, 7720. I use a sub paper and I use Cobra inks. These are the only products I've ever used. So I don't have um, any input technically on any other type of products, but I love, I love my Cobra ink. And I love my ASAP paper. Um, I'll, I guess if somebody was to send me a different type of something, I'd try it. But if I was to purchase, you know, when I purchase again, when I do purchase, um, these are the things that I always get. Cobra ink's a little expensive, but I love it and it works for me. And I'm not willing to test anything out right now. Um, I'm still a small business and I don't have money to spend on something that might or might not work for me. Um, I hear there's other inks that people swear by, and I guess it's just personal preference. So let's talk about this setup. So my heat press, and then I have my heat pad, my parchment paper on the bottom, my substrate, and then another piece of parchment. And I am pressing these. My heat press runs a little bit hot. Um, normally it's about 385 for 60 seconds. I'm doing it at 377 for 57 seconds each side. And I have it on just above light pressure. You don't really need a whole lot of pressure for neoprene. And I, I gently close. Okay, so I'm about five seconds left. I'm gonna super gently, here we go, super gently pick up this press to make sure there is no ghosting. And I'm gonna give them a good flip. Get everything out of the way because otherwise I'm gonna burn my hand. I probably should have gloves. Um, I've tried them and I just don't, I can't work properly with gloves, um, but you should have gloves. I can't wear them. <laughs> okay, so now I flipped it and back in they go for another 57 seconds. Okay, so we're just about done right now. And again, slowly lift. And I'm gonna turn this off for now. Start letting it cool down. And we're all done. So we just peel it off, peel it off. And there we go. And I, I don't really love working on white because it's not really a true white. 
Um, they kind of look a little gray because they're made to be printed on all you know, every inch of it. Um, but if you didn't know, <laughs> then I think, I mean, she's going to love these. And if you have the urge to check this out, they're an amazing nonprofit organization. Um, so go ahead, go check out tiffsplace.org. I in no way work for them, but um, I mean, I guess I do work for them. I make their promotional materials. Um, so this is them. And I think they came out great and she'll be really happy.